if, if you're asking yourself, where should I start with security? You probably don't have a security engineer. You probably don't have a CISO. You are just trying to understand where should you start. And so I think a good time to do it is when you feel your organization has grown to such a, a degree that you really don't know what else is going on in the organization. I've seen it also leverage that you have a feeling that there are some things wrong, but you need an outside person to kind of help you measure and put everything together in a stack ranked way so that you can go to your executive and stakeholders and say, hey, here's what we need to fix. Here's an outside authority that this is their unadulterated opinion on what we need to fix uh, given our size and industry. You gotta speak their language. So CFO uh, understands numbers, right? Uh, they also understand risk. So does the general counsel. So COOs tend to be, you know, they're operational, right? So they're trying to reduce costs and whatnot. So that can be a little more difficult sometimes. CFOs understand risk, understand financial impact, you know, so it's kind of like hedging your bets. So, okay, we need to take care of this. How important is this? Same thing with legal. Legal is very, very like, you know, uh, risk oriented. CEO is, is uh, you know, really depends. Everything is on their plate. So for them is like, okay, what's going to impact me from getting more customers or, you know, what's going to hurt the brand if, if we got affected. So if I were to put my unbiased hat on, you know, you should definitely hire a security person uh, as soon as you can. However, most companies can't afford to have a security person or they just don't have a security person for whatever reason. I'm not going to blame them. We're not going to blame anybody right now. Once you understand that you, there are security needs that might need to be met, um, or your current engineering team or your current organization is not as security focused as it should be. And it takes like a little bit of self-awareness to understand that. Once you've reached that point, then obviously having a fractional security person is better than nothing. However, people and organizations and companies should understand that, you know, when you engage a fractional security person, you're not going to be secure overnight. It's not like, you know, I, oh, I got a security person. I am secure. No, now the real work begins and you actually have to implement the security things. And this person is going to highlight things to you that you might not have been aware. And it's going to take some, you know, a little bit of humility and, uh, and some self-awareness to understand, oh, you know, this person's right or, you know, and you can always push back. And that's the thing with, with a fractional security person. It's really about the relationship and whether this person can understand the needs of your business, right? Uh, where you can have a mismatch is you have someone that's never dealt with SaaS companies before working with SaaS and has all these on-prem type of solutions that are not really geared for a company that's all cloud-based, right? Okay, let's say you went with a full-time security person, right? Um, a lot of big question is like, who do we hire? Do we hire a security manager? Do we hire a security engineer? A head of security? What do they do? And that really depends on the size of your organization and stage you're at. So... Um, let's just take, for example, you're a series A company with like 125 people of that, you know, maybe 50 of them are engineers. Then um, the first security hire is going to have to be like a security engineer. If you're a larger company, say like a series C, then at that point, you're going to need a security manager, a head of security. You're going to want that person to be uh, alongside the VP of engineering. So at that point, you might have like a head of security and maybe a security analyst and an engineer. But a lot of times the VPs of engineering are like, are kind of scared of getting a security person that's gonna block them on, on all these security initiatives. But uh, there are a lot of good security folks out there that will help you actually achieve some security goals without blocking you, right? And that's where like having a good senior engineer on staff that can kind of do the work for you and, and heavy lifting. Thoughts on companies combining the CISO role with the CTO or CI role in order to avoid additional head costs. I have nothing good to say about that. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. It is a direct conflict of interest for the CISO and the CIO to be the same person or the CISO and the CTO to be the same person. They have different priorities. The CTO, for example, is responsible for building technology and making technology meet the business needs. And the CISO is responsible for securing the data and uh, is responsible for making sure that data stays secure. And a lot of times they're uh, in opposite priorities. You know, CTO, CIO want to move fast. The CISO wants to make sure that the things are just well thought through and, and vetted. Now, the CISO will not be a blocker. A lot of people, a lot of 
CIO, CTOs, unfortunately, may see the CISO or security as a blocker. Security is not a necessary evil. Security is about balancing risk and about communicating that risk to the people that need to know.